All right. Ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, want to welcome you back to the Jaggernaut Podcast. I'm your host, Michael. I got my brother with me, as always, Franklin. So uh, let me start off this way. Do ball. All right. So I'm going to start that off uh, because I think both of our feelings are not hurt, but I think we're both a little bit upset with what we what our expectations were for the Jags and what we've seen through two preseason games. Um, so news of the day, Travis Etienne. This was the guy, their gadget guy, you know, uh, home run hitter, just a guy who every time he got his hands on the ball was going to be electric, somebody they can scheme to get the ball to. Okay, well, he's officially out for the year. So if you have not heard during last night's matchup, uh, Travis and ETN suffered a foot sprain, uh, what is more commonly called the Liz Frank injury. Now, it was, I think, in the 80s and even early 90s, a Liz Frank injury would basically, in your career, it was extremely hard to get back, uh, to, to get, get back into NFL form with that type of injury. Uh, with today's medical science, you know, they go in, they put some screws in, bones heal, they reattach the tendons. Uh, so they're saying that he should be back basically next year. So they put him on IR. If you go on IR right now, you're not coming back. So there is no designation to return for ETN. So even though they said it would be about 12 weeks, the Jaguars moved him to uh, – to IR officially ending his season. Uh, let, let, let me just say something right there. Uh, the 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 in, that type of injury, there it wouldn't. The designation's irrelevant at that point. I mean, I almost wonder what he's even going to be when he comes back. Um, you know, there's a reason why it was career end or in, ending, and I don't. I mean, okay, maybe he can salvage some sort of career, but we can. Uh, to me, let's just move that over. And, and, and in my opinion, that was a wasted pick. And I'm, I mean, this is the pl- person aside. I mean, I, you, you feel bad for the person that, you know, I went through college, go, goes in, it gets, finally gets the opportunity that he's l- dreamed about. And, you know, the first play that he catches a pass out of the backfield, nobody's even around him and he's down instantly. So, uh, you know, my thought on that is like, let's just forget Travis Etienne, the player. Uh, I don't think we're going to get anything. I can see it now. We're going to say, oh, he's, you know, what are we going to get? And, and then we'll be talking next offseason. We're getting nothing. We're going to get nothing out of this guy. Uh, that's not, I mean, this is like Tavian Banks. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, he was so electric. Man, if he, how's he going to come back? And he never came back. So, and, and, and I'm not saying that's going to happen. I, I'm saying that is my perspective at this point, and I'm not going to sit there and pretend that, and we never saw him anyway. I mean, this talk about him being Alvin Kamara and all this other stuff, I mean, I, it's it's irrelevant. The pick is wasted. We, we basically, we got him and Caleb Vaughn chase on for Jalen Ramsey, and that's not a good deal. Um, so I agree with you on the terms of the of the trade. Um, I don't believe it was a good deal. You know my thoughts. I agreed going in that we probably should not be drafting a running back in the first round because not necessarily injuries like this, but they they take a beating. They're injury prone. They are the workhorses. So you need multiple of them. And the fact that you have to spread the money around, the fact that if you build your offense around one guy, that's not a quarterback. Um, that it has the potential to come back and hurt you. Here we are at that potential. Uh, This is why, Urban Meyer, you do not draft a running back in the first round. Uh, You know, so can Everybody knew it. Everybody knew it but us. No, I mean, no. yeah, I guess. Nobody was saying draft a running back. Nobody – and we talked ourselves into it like we always do because they make a play and you want to back your team. 
no, no, no. Uh, well, I'm going to say nobody, but very few people were of the mindset that drafting a running back at that point was uh, almost everybody was thinking offensive line. Yeah, I mean, I wanted offensive line, as we saw basically through this last game, offensive line <laughs> might, might have been a much better pick. Um, you know, there's nothing we can do about it now. So um, I want to basically just move on. We'll talk about the game. So Trevor played an entire half of football. Um, what I saw was more of the same from what I saw from, with the Cleveland game. The receivers weren't getting open. There wasn't a lot of separation there. Um, I thought Trevor had more time to throw the ball. Yeah, he got hit afterwards, but that's going to happen. But I thought he did have more time. I thought the offensive line for pass protection played better than they did in the first game. However, for running the ball, they played absolutely worse. They got no movement on anybody. Now, I was happy that at least uh, New Orleans played their starters. But what that told me was, is essentially you have NFL teams and then you have the Jags. Exactly what we looked like last year is pretty much part and parcel for what we're going to look like this year. Uh, we're not taking a big leap this year. We're not going to win. You know, at this point, after these two games, I think Vegas has us at 6.5 uh, for win totals. I think you take the under. I'd, yeah. I'd be under four at this point, to be honest with you. I went I went from and then I, I know that this is like uh, so a conversation today was, you know, about my frustration and I should I should lower my expectations. And my my thought on that is my ex, my expectations weren't high. I wanted eight and eight or whatever. It's the 17 game season. So whatever, whatever that equates to somewhere around eight and eight, that's what I was looking for. The idea that that's some, let's talk about what, what that means and why eight and eight is completely reasonable given not where we are now, not what we know now that now, now what we know now I'm under four games. That's where I'm at now because of what we actually have seen from this team. But my – think about if I just – okay, you sucked at the right time. You got, the, you got a, a generational player or talent uh, – can't say he's a player yet. You got a generational talent at the most important position in all of sports. You have a coach who's won multiple places, decides that he's – Coming into the league, he wants to do your franchise. Uh, you had an additional first-round draft pick. You had built on to the two first-round draft picks that you had the year before, uh, plus one of the – was was it the best uh, salary cap in, in the league or, or second top, best? It was top three. Okay. Yeah. There is no reason in this day and age – I'm tired of these – it takes a few years rebuild. And even urban has never said that for what it's worth. Um, and, and of course uh, you, you don't know how to take coach speak or, or what have you. You're not going to say, yeah, we're going to lose some. Nobody says that. But the point is, is that uh, eight and eight is completely reasonable based on. So we were, we had a great hand and we do what we do every time. We just blow it. We, 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 we do these decisions that, you, a lot of them are head scratchers. You're like, oh, I guess they, you know, I guess they know something we don't know. No, they don't. They never do. They never know what we don't know. They've got, they, in fact, they don't know. This idea that, you know, there's these people that know the, the, the ins and outs of football, they're not geniuses there. They're doofuses. And, and, and it seems that way. And, um, and I think that that's what we're seeing. And, and so, I mean, think about what we saw with Cleveland. That was the backups. Okay, the Saints played the backups some. Uh, the only time our defense really began to look like we were shutting them down was when the backups came in for the Saints. So we can we can hang our hat a little bit on the on the defense. And yes, the run game, the the run defense was good uh, throughout. It appeared. Um, and yes, our corners and safeties tend to be in position. They never make a play though. Never make a play. 
Um, and and this is one of the things that I talked about before, because when, when you brought up the fact that the wide receivers are not getting open, uh, one of the things I brought up, I think, two, the two weeks ago was the fact that I was a little concerned by the fact that we're talking up Laquan Treadwell and what's is it uh, Phil, Phillips? What's his first name? Philip Dorsett. Philip Dorsett. I don't know why I keep thinking it as his last name. So Philip Dorsett. Um, and these are guys that were busts on other teams. And I, I, I was concerned about that because it's like, wait a minute, we've got two guys all of a sudden who's now figured it out on our team. That seems a little coincidental to me. And so it, what I'm thinking, and this was what I was worried about is it isn't they, that they figured it out. It's that they're going against our secondary and our secondary is making them look good. And, and I think that's what we've got it. And it, and it kind of sucks because I thought we had would have an improved secondary. I don't know that we do. Um, I thought that our wide receiver core was a little slightly better than average NFL. We look to be far below average NFL now. Our offensive line, and I mean, if you just think about it, you give Urban Meyer the benefit of the doubt. And you say, I mean, even the announcers last night as they're watching the game, they go, well, the offensive line struggled last year, and they kept all five of them and the offensive line coach. We've, we've said that multiple times. We said that multiple times because they did it for obviously continuity and they believe that continuity is better than talent when it comes to the, when it comes to the offensive line. I, I understand continuity, but you have to have talent and I don't think we really have talent. Now, that being said, I don't want to come down all completely doom and gloom. I know that Urban has not said that it's a rebuild, but this is this is technically a rebuild. That's what we're doing. Now, granted, we've been in a three-year rebuild, but we had Dave Caldwell for majority of that of, of those of this rebuild. So we're still in the process of rebuilding it. Again, nobody wants to hear that because we're sick of it. We've been rebuilding for the last 20 years. We've been hot dumpster fire garbage for 20 years. And here we go again. The, the problem, I think, is that we take what other people say, some outside people, a lot, in fact, almost all of our local media uh, that, covers the, that covers the Jags, and they're like, oh, man, it's going to happen. You know, we got this guy, and I remember him from Florida, and, but, and they throw out all this good shit, and it makes you go, okay, okay, I, I, can, I can see that. I can understand why they're doing that. And then you see this, you see basically the results on the field. Honestly, I'm not sure at this point, I understand that, that uh, Urban Meyer wanted to bring in people who have had success with uh, young quarterbacks. I don't know what they're doing. I, I, I don't know which one it is, uh, whether it's Schottenheimer or the other guy. But that offense is fucking horrid. The passing game is horrid. You know, if your guys aren't getting separation for, uh, against other teams, whether they're getting separation against our secondary, that's a different story. But if they're not getting separation against other teams, you scheme them open. I'm tired of this. It's the preseason. It's the preseason. Let me tell you, at some point, you have got to say we need to start getting these guys some success, even if you have to open your damn playbook. Why? Because success builds on success. And that's not what we're doing. You know, it, at this point, it's like they're holding all this back. They're not holding jack shit back. These guys are going to come out. We, we may be Houston. But if we do, it's going to be barely. It'll be a dogfight. And it'd basically be the, the two chihuahuas of the kennel scrapping it out for a little kernel of bone. That's essentially what it's going to be. It's going to be the two shittiest teams fighting it out. Well, I so, don't see any reason why we would even think we could beat Houston at this point. We can't run block. We can't pass block. We can't get wide receivers open and we can't cover their wide receivers. At what point it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback and 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 Houston looks good right now. And yeah, it is the preseason. And so you know, you can't go, oh, you know, the Jags are gonna be horrible. 
again, um, you can't say that's a definite and no more than you can say, because like Houston's undefeated. You don't expect that to be the, the case with that team this year. But the truth of the matter is, is what I do expect is I expect us to lose against Houston. I don't think we're going to win. And it's it, 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 for, it, for one for what you just said, you can't don't, I, I'm not going to this is a brand new program, a brand new uh Everything around this team's basically brand new, including most of the friggin' players that are any of, of any sort of success or that for, that we're counting on. Trevor Lawrence, the coach, the coordinators, all of that. You mean to tell me they're just going to flip a switch when it comes time to Houston and they're going to sit? Oh, they've been uh, just like you said. They're that's not my fighting. point. That's my point about the success. They're not going to flip a switch. They're not going to have any tricks in their bag because guess what? When they pull out their so-called, you know, secret playbook that they can't show anybody or run against anybody, guess what's going to happen? Our receivers aren't going to get open. We're not going to pass block. So we're not going to run block. So what the fuck good are your plays? you got these immaculate, beautiful plays that are so super secret, top secret. Nobody can see them. When it comes time to run them, they're going to mess it up. Well, let me ask you this. Are they still saying that? I know they said that after the Cleveland game, but it sounded like Urban was talking about, well, we're not going to do that again. And from my understanding, they gained planned a little bit. That's, that, that, thing. that's it. Run. Do you start off run for nothing, run for six inches or whatever it was, Maybe it was like two, two yards. Two yards. Yeah. Like two yards. And, and when does that ever work? We're going to run up the middle, run up the middle, and then we're going to we're going to put Trevor in third and long behind an offensive line that is that you just you get three starters out on. Now I, I guess that's the the brilliance behind it is oh we're going to run now because it's like. Uh, yeah, this is the thing. It's just this is what I think bothers me the most is that it, it doesn't seem to be that hard to me. I'm not I'm not going to sit there and claim I know these like I'm some great football person or I know anything about the game. I, I'm just I just like most people. I sit, just sit and watch this stuff. But I know what crap looks like. And that's what that is. Um, th I know what doesn't work. I know when you line up, like, and then when you pass, oh, we're going to, like, think think about what they did. So they started out looking like they were going to run, and they ran, and then they looked like they were going to run, and then they ran, and then they looked like they were going to pass, and then they passed, and then they thought, oh, shoot, three and out. I wonder what happened. And then in Cleveland, they started out, look, like, okay, they passed on the first play. Great. The only problem is you knew they were passing because they lined up in a pass formation. So it's like no no motions. Do you notice that nobody's moving? How's Trevor supposed to learn whether they're in zone or man when you're not even motioning your receivers? They're just lining up that's, on the line and they're just going straight out. Hey, hey, that is top secret. <laughs> yeah. It is. We can't show motions. What is motion? What is this new thing they've brought to the NFL? Motion. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it, man. man look, I, I understand your frustration. I do. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that there have been other first overall draft picks who have had shit years. I'm expecting Trevor Lawrence to either get his ass whooped and injured and out by probably game six or just have an abysmal year. He's going to have an abysmal year because, uh, honestly – Urban Meyer put together an abysmal staff. He kept he kept probably the one guy he should have got rid of, which was the offensive line coach. And then he brought in all these new guys who think that their play calls are so super top, top secret that they can't share it, show them. And this is all to build a rookie quarterback. So Ur Herb's comment was, we, we wanted to establish the run. Because establishing the run helps a younger quarterback. Now, I agree with that. My problem is, is that basically every single run we tried was right up the middle. 
if you have a stout defense where you can't get push up the middle, you take the ball outside. You do tosses. You get the ball outside. You try to attack them in multiple areas. And we didn't. We didn't. We, we honestly, we, we, didn't, we didn't do shit. C.J. Beathard, he's the best quarterback we got now. And you know that ain't true. I mean, and I know I know that's not true. I know. But I mean, he's completing stuff to fourth, third and fourth wide receivers. You know, is it because their third and fourth guys can't cover as well? You know, I mean, there's I and I, I completely agree with you. This this nonsense notion that they have to hide this so that they can flip this switch right before Houston. And then set off on this rocket ship. That shit ain't happening, man. They are not doing that. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's like what they're not going to reveal anything that's never been seen before in the league. And even if you do, what do you get out of it? The one game? You go, you got a trick play. What what's what's the nature of a trick play? You know what a trick play is? Uh you, you don't know it's coming when it happens to show up. It's not like you don't know it exists. Like, oh, my gosh, what was that play? It's called a flea flicker. We just invented it today. It's like, no, you didn't invent any of this stuff. It's, it, it doesn't even make any sense what they're talking about. And this is where it's like they're out. On the one hand, they're like they're out coaching them like, or, you know, they're out thinking themselves. It's like, look, look just we have play said, the game in practice. I thought that's said, what we're supposed to be doing, figuring it out, how to, how to uh, actually, you, you don't want to practice running your scheme. You're going to save it. I mean, and this whole stuff about Trevor, not getting the starting reps. I'm not even worried about that. That doesn't worry me at all. It might be indicative now that I think about it of, a, of an overall philosophical problem. But the issue that I have is that it doesn't matter. I, you can have, you could give him every rep. You could cheat. You could you could come up with some way to to program him like a computer. If that's the offense they're running out with, if that's what they're practicing, if that's the reps, we suck. Like it doesn't matter if they're if the wide receivers are getting open on our secondary, it's because it's our secondary. Uh, it, it are is are they getting are they scheming them open against our secondary? But I, it, none of it even makes any sense. It's like they're just not executing. And and let me say something: they look slow, really slow. Like the wide receivers don't look, they don't look sudden at all. No, no one looks. The, the none of the skill positions look sudden. No, none of the offensive linemen look stout or strong. Powerful, yeah. Uh, that's loserville, man. I mean, that's like you guys aren't – you don't have the horses. That's the problem. The scheme talk, I wonder if that's even like – if the, if they're even really even serious or if that, that that's some sort of excuse that's like the coaches are covering up for the players or something because um, – and, and, and don't get me wrong – in Cleveland, I thought the scheme was terrible. Um, and to start the game, I thought the first three plays were not good either. So um, I don't know if that's – I mean, I don't know if you'll want to put your players if, – if the point of this is to put our players in bad positions, if that's what they're trying to do with these play calls, it's one thing to not reveal, like, tricky things. It's another thing to go, hey, let's call a play that's dumb and see how it works. It's like, I mean, I don't know if that's what they're trying to do. If that's, well, I think next game we'll try not to call the dumb plays here and, and we'll apply, we'll, we'll do the smart plays, you know, the plays that work on that, on those specific down in instances, we'll use those and not the other plays that don't tend to work. I mean, I don't understand it, man. It's like, I, I, to me, I, I just wonder if it's, it, 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 is it a, uh, and I'm starting to think that this whole, like, you know, I kind of talked about urban, like, Oh, woe is me. I'm just this, old college coach relying on my old NFL bevel. He's got all the NF you ask Colin, they're the NFL guys. It's like, man, do you know football? It's like, you don't even like, Oh, we're going to establish the run by looking like you're going to run. We're going to, we're going to pass. Yeah. You look like you were going to pass. I, I can't believe the defense didn't roll over for you. And, and, 
and allow you to run right up the gut when that's look look like what you're going to do it. I'm, I'm surprised they, they, they didn't, they weren't tricked by your, your mastery there. I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. And, and I, I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, like I said, it, they, they, they can't block and they, they don't have skilled position players. It, it I don't know. Is it, and apparently they don't know how to coach either. I mean, that seems like what we're te- what we're saying, right? I, now. Yeah, I mean, I I think uh, I think it's a big combination of all of the above. I think all of the free agents they brought in, they brought in um, who Shaquille Griffin. Yeah, I mean that that dude got beat twice. Now, granted, granted, it would they were good throws, they were good catches, but he got beat twice. Yeah, like, dude, what the fuck are we paying you for? The, think about this too. This is something I thought about. Um, how many times are we going to, we're going to see these throws where Trevor throws it immediately to Chenault on the, um, at the line of scrimmage. I mean, we've seen that like four times now, I think, and they haven't had a lot of plays. Dude, dude, that's in the top secret vault. Well, are the deep passes in the top secret vault? Because it seems to me in order to get some, some, uh, you know, when they throw these, the corners are like, they're not press coverage, but they're not far off the line of scrimmage when they're throwing them. So it's not like, you know, I would think, you know, maybe you want to throw that type of play after you loosened up the defense with, I don't know, something downfield. They haven't done that at all. And yet they're throwing these like, uh, little baby routes and, 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 and you notice that too. Like I, one of the things I, I saw was that uh, Jameis needs to get uh, eight yards or a couple of, there were third longs and our corners lined up on the um, first down line, you know, they're backpedaling. So the corner's not going to stand there and move forward. They always backpedal and then break when they see the wide receiver break. You start on the on the uh, first down marker. Guess where he's catching it? The first down marker. That's what you're trying to stop them from doing. Don't line up on the first. And then how many times did you see Trevor throw a, a pass five yards when they needed eight or nine? But what about last game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I include with the Browns, that seemed to be what – it It seemed to me uh, what they – I, I don't know because uh, you can't see a ton from from the 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 feed, you know, the national feed. Uh, you can't really see. It focuses in on the quarterback, then it'll follow the ball. So you don't know really what the receivers are doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, so there was a play last night. It was third and eight, right? Marvin Jones runs a four yard route, a fucking four yard route. Oh, he's going to, he's going to turn it up for four yards, you know, because yeah, I mean, I, if he got all the separation, I, I, he was immediately tackled. The guy was right there on his hip. I'm like, I, it's it was really how it works. Right. You I know, mean, can we go for seven? Can we get a pass play that has every route go for seven yards? And then maybe he falls forward for a yard. Right. That was better. Th- that was better. Look, all, I, I understand your frustration. I'm frustrated too. But we're going to suck this year. You know, we're not contending for the AFC South. We're not con- – we're contending for the number one pick overall next year. That's really what, what we're doing. Yeah. So, I mean, all I can do is look forward to the people coming over and hanging out. I can look forward to drinking some beer and having the Jags on in the background. And that's, that's essentially what they are. They're background noise. Well, here's, here's the good news. You want to, you want to, um, you want, you want us uh, posit some positivity. Here's the positive note. We no longer have to worry about being disappointed. That's, that's gone. That, that, that is that ship sailed because there we're at the floor right now. I mean, there's like, I mean, I guess it could get a little worse, I mean, we could go 0 and 17 this year, but it's not like we're going to fall that far. I mean, it, I, honestly, I wouldn't be overly shocked that we if we yeah, go I mean, 0 and 17. Who are we going to be? 
If we can't beat, if we can't beat I, Houston, who are we going to beat? You know, that's the thing. You look, you look ahead. What do they do? They go, oh, we're going to look, you know, we're going to play it by quarters, right? And I'm just looking at the first game and I'm, I'm going, we are going up against a team that everybody regards as the worst team in the league. And we cannot beat that team. Like we cannot beat that team. Not with what we saw. Now, maybe they'll come out. I don't know what you can do to fix what we saw because that's just lack of talent in my, because you can see where the talent is. Like the interior of the defensive line looks talented. Uh, the cor- the secondary isn't atrocious. You know they have some right. They're in position. And they quickness. just don't make the play. Yeah, they just don't have ball skills. They're just not going to do anything to help you win games. And once everybody knows that, you just throw. Even if they're there, it doesn't matter. Just throw. Um, the linebackers mediocre. Um, you know. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to sit here and take it too too much longer than what what, what we really need to tonight. But um, yeah, we're not going to win that game. I mean, there's just no reason to expect it. We couldn't. We couldn't beat. Uh, we we it wasn't we couldn't beat. We got dominated by the second stringers on the Browns. Um, the Saints dominated us as well. I don't expect to be dominated by the Texans but I don't expect to win. Yeah, and if we can't beat them, you're hoping, uh, you know, maybe some team has a bad game or two and you get two, two, two wins, three wins. That's it. That's all you can. That, that's the team we saw. Yeah. Our, our hope, our hope that somebody gets hurt on some of the other teams, you know, that's all we got. I mean, that's really all we got. And again, the positive is we don't have any, you know, we talked today. Uh, lower your expectations. Oh, they are lowered. They are yeah, lowered lower. Now. I lower them. I mean, that's all we can do. I'm. I get sick and tired of believing the hype. And then well, we should have then, had hype. Like I said, there's no they, reason they failed. They failed us so far. This is an F grade right now. Now they can change it. I mean, you get a grade through throughout the season, obviously, but this is an F. This sucks, man. This is, there's no reason, again, we're, we're just asking for professional looking team. We're not asking for the Super Bowl here. We're not asking to go up against the best and, and, and uh, go toe to toe. We're, we're asking for the, for them not to just get blown out by everybody to where they're not, you know, it, it, that's not what we've got. We had a one in 15 team last year and it, we've gotten no better. We, we've, 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 we've we've gotten no better. It's, it's weird, man. I don't, I don't dude, know. It, dude, all the better is hidden in Daryl Bevel's top uh, secret, so it's top secret safe, man. Yeah. He's going to pull, he's going to pull it out. And it's an amazing strategy it. they've discovered. It's an amazing right. strategy. They've discovered how to completely take all the uh, trajectory and momentum of an off season and throw it right into the toilet. I don't know if that's some sort of uh you know, Dude, that seems to be indicative of our team. I mean, no offense, but that's exactly what it seems like. Every time we start to get hyped about something, if all it goes straight to it goes straight to pot. I mean, like I said last, like I said last week, I'm going to say it again. Every single play, we have somebody mess up. Every single play, we get a good return, we get a block in the back or a holding that's on the other damn side of the field that didn't have to happen. Yeah. We we look Andy like we're Finger, two times now. We look like we're about Dewey, to get a hit sack. the road, dude. We look like we're about to get a sack, and we're off by this much. Quarterback escapes and makes a brilliant play. Yeah, one handed grabs and yep. Yeah, we, meanwhile, need, yeah, what are we doing? We can't. We need eight yards. We run four yard routes. You know, we need a touchdown, and what happens? For some reason, the guard or the tackle will forget to block the man in front of him. It's like, well, I, I didn't know. You know, like all of a sudden what you were supposed to do changed. Every single play, all the time, that's what happens. Yeah, and it bothers me that it doesn't seem like it bothers them that much. You know, like they talk and I, I don't know what I'm supposed to expect them to say, but I think. How I, about we 
how about we came out and we we were we were hot hot garbage yeah i'd i'd really like somebody to say that i just just so that you have an idea like how do you fix a problem you don't know you have this is the one of the biggest issues that i've had with the jags is they act like they're oh it's just a um you know it was a hiccup the same hiccup you had last week the one you had same hiccup you've had you know it's uh, it's amazing. And, and the saints, you know, they like last night, that one guy, like they don't have wide receivers, you know, that their wide receivers are down. Uh, but we made that guy look like it, my, who, Michael Thomas, who don't need that guy. We're playing the Jags today. You can throw, uh, um, I don't know, Joe, whatever, uh, off the street. Hey, you know, hey. two touchdowns, man. That, that brings me back, you know, fantasy. Hopefully that'll be cranking up here shortly. I haven't heard anything about it, but I'd like to know when we're going to draft. I used to have a rule. If you have a fantasy player who was playing the Jags, you start them. Yeah. I think I may have to implement that rule again. Especially if they are having like a – if they're on like a down streak, if you ever noticed that, <laughs> yeah. somebody's in a down streak, oh, dude. <laughs> Yeah, play I the Jags. guarantee you, I guarantee you, like if they, uh, oh man, they've had multi-interception games coming into that game, I guarantee you they're, they're going to throw four touchdowns, zero interceptions or something. Running backs having an issue, uh, you know, play the Jags. You know, running game struggling. Oh my gosh, it's going to yep, be a play hard, the Jags. hard game. It, it, it's, it's just weird, man. It's almost like we're a cursed team or something. I, you know what, I don't even want to say are. that. It's kind of weird even to talk <laughs> like superstitiously. I don't Here's what we are. That, but we like, are officially the league's slump buster. No, we've been that for a while, man. It's just like, what, what are we – again, I just want a professional football team, man. There's a rumor we got one and when, like, awarded a team in, 80, in, in uh, 93, I think. 95. Yeah, I think it was 93. I think we played in 95. Yeah. So it, it the, the the professional team appeared. It's like uh I don't know, uh like Bigfoot or something. Um there's this rumor out there that something like that exists for Jacksonville. I haven't seen it, man. This team is I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but all right. So you want to wrap this up? Yeah, man. I think I think we have given everybody their full force dose of negativity. I will say that I do believe, though, that this is what they've earned. You know, they have not. We we treat this team with with kid gloves, you know. But you're right. They they've earned. They've officially earned the league slump buster tag. They've earned dumpster fire, uh, and that's exactly who we are. You know. Well, at least we know it. Like I said, that's if there's a silver lining, we know who we are. We're just going to show up dutifully, um, whoever, you know, to the games, to watch the games and watch jag turds on the, on the field. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, well, it's like minor league, you know, we're showing up to watch our minor league team. Yeah. Versus versus a major league team, so it's a, uh, like we're like the Special Olympics, you know. It's it's it, the, look at them go, you know. You really you root, you root on their heart. They're trying. You remember that? I mean, we talked about that. Oh, they're 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 not giving up on Marone. I mean, that's what the, that's what I expect. They're not giving up on old herbs. He's right. he's really got them playing tough. You know, like they're they're four touchdowns down, but you know they're really trying hard. They're battling, <laughs> right? All right. Well, let's end that here. Yeah. You have anything else to add, bro? No. No. That's the yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, kids, thank you for joining us. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a, a lot of negative. Hopefully, it was cathartic. If you're a Jag fan, just. <laughs> yeah. Knowing oh. people share your misery. Yeah, yeah we're we're, yeah. we're 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 uniting. We're uniting under our misery. Hello, my name is Frank, and I'm a Jag fan. <laughs>
Um, I, I, I've been a Jags fan for 25 years. <laughs> it's like, oh, poor guy. It's like, yeah. oh, no. I thought I had it bad. Everybody clap. clap. It's hard. It's hard to be a Jags fan. Uh, oh, no. All right. So I'm just going to go do uh. all. All right. Well, thank I'm you. I'm glad you did it because I don't have the heart. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep watching. Uh, I'll keep yelling my do balls. I'll keep wearing my Jags gear. Uh, other than that, they're not getting any money from me. That's about the best I can do. Yeah. Miracles happen. I've heard that somewhere before. Uh, not in Duval County. Yeah. They happen in other places. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Thank you for joining us. Bye, guys. See you guys. <laughs>